in order to do the processing, we're going to start with the contents of the input basket. So I essentially want to load all three of these runs into the input basket. Each run contains a throughput file. I'm going to take the entire fixed sampling folder that contains all three runs and right click replace in the input basket. So the input basket contains those three runs. Highlight the input basket, maybe go back to my DOF ID. And if I have a quick look here at the three tacos, basically they're the same run repeated three times to give you the concept of multi-run processing. Uh, you can see the TAC goes from 856 all the way to 200, sorry, 2,994 RPM. So that's our run-up range that we'll be interested in processing. Now to do the processing, so far, that's just looking at the data that I've loaded into the input basket. We're going to move to this processing group. And here I'm interested in, again, uh, probably looking at the contents of the input basket. I can see my input basket is showing me multiple runs for each point, just DOF versus run. So that's the view of this pivot table, individual runs across the top. All right, so that's the data selection, the display. What is new is this process panel. It's right here. It's basically mainly blank, except for this one starting point labeled input, my input process. And over in the properties area, we still have our properties in the right margin, but it's the lower half of the margin. In the upper half, I have this, what we're calling a method library, where depending on the add-ins that are turned on, I have a variety of methods to work with. So what I wanted to illustrate is if I go back to file and go to my add-ins, here we are with the process designer uh, product turned on. We also have turned on uh, audio replay, uh, but the main thing is we still we have our load data analysis, interactive analysis, signature analysis. Those are all turned on. The main focus will be signature. But I wanted to point out there are others that are turned off. Okay, sound quality, octave, uh, fatigue, those sorts of things. So let me go back and focus again back on the method library. You can see, in addition to my most recently used methods, the methods are sorted by add-in. So here under interactive analysis, I have quite a few different methods available to me under load data analysis under process designer, some basic methods for controlling the data flow in the process that we're going to design. And then of course, the main group here, signature analysis that we're gonna focus on to perform some signature processing on this time date. So to get started here, I wanna change the ribbon. Basically you see up here on the tab, I'm in the process tab at the bottom. I have four different choices, and again, they're all similar, just different amounts of real estate devoted to the different uh, panes. Universal gives me a little bit of all the major four panes that I want to make use of. So we're going to stick to the universal view. But across the top here where I have my different ribbons, you can see the process is in orange. It's basically warning me that you're in the processing task you might want to make use of the processing ribbon and not just the home ribbon. So if I click on process, you can see the ribbon changes now to give me a bunch of new functionality related to processing. So with the data in the input basket, and again, just to illustrate, I'll select one of the runs, it's time data during a run-up. I'm going to start with the data in the input basket and I'm going to perform a spectral map calculation. So by hitting the method library spectral map, it adds it to my data flow and connects it to the input. So from input, we're passing data down into spectral map and performing a spectral map calculation. And then I'd be interested in passing spectral map data onto my overall level calculation. So you can see it's automatically linked that to overall level. I have to put in, in certain orders. For example, if I was to not highlight overall level, but to select input level and ask for overall level, it hasn't automatically connected input to overall. 
if I try to manually connect those two, you're going to see it complain. These are incompatible data types. I can't go from time data straight into overall level. Overall level expects to receive data from a spectral map. So let me delete this. Also from a spectral map, I can perform some order section calculations. So we're going to let it connect order sections. Let me move these little bits so get a clearer view of the arrows. We're going to transfer the spectral map data both into overall level and order sections. Now, if I select the order sections, you can see down under the properties, the properties for the order sections method. Uh, one of those major properties is the channel to calculate the orders from. Well, that needs to be identified as my TAC channel, TAC01. It's my TAC channel. And then which orders I want to process. It's defaulted to order 2.0. I don't know that that's really what I want. So at the moment, I'm going to take this process and instead of having it on, I'm going to turn it off. I don't want it to calculate orders yet until I have a look at the spectral map. So let's uh, hit run to calculate a process and have a quick look at one of these active runs. We can see a spectral map here for one of the channels and its overall level calculation. And I'm just doing this to get an idea of what is the order content of this data. Well, there's first order, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then it starts trailing off. So instead of focusing on just second order, I'm interested in several orders here. So I'm going to highlight the order section and go back to that orders field and modify it to look at the first five orders, one through five, even orders. And then I'm gonna to remember to turn that method back on, okay? So I'm going to reject the data. I'm not going to store it in the project yet. It's actually in this intermediate location called active analysis. It hasn't been stored to the project until I hit the accept. But I don't want this partial analysis. I'm going to reject that. Clears out the active analysis. I still have my input basket intact with all three runs, all channels. And the only other thing I'm interested in doing is changing my spectral map processing to not be tracked on time, but to track it on a channel. That channel being the TACO channel again. So pick the TACO channel and we're going to perform a run up from 1000 to 2800 RPM, somewhere just below 2900 RPM. It's my max RPM. I go further down the properties here for the spectral map. You can see we're computing an auto power, we're going to put it in the linear format. I can set the frequency resolution and a couple other parameters. I'll just leave on the defaults. All right, so I've defined my spectral map parameters, I have my input, and I've turned on the order sections one through five. I believe we're ready to go. I hit run. I get a progress indicator quickly across the bottom here next to the messages area and the processing is done. I have my accept and reject buttons, but again, I can look at the analysis before I decide to accept it. So here, if I jump up to look at, say, the first channel across uh, all the runs, you know, I should have three spectral maps. I have three times five orders, 15 orders plotted, three overall levels, and then three time histories for that particular channel. Make it simpler, let me go back to one particular run and look at the data there. One spectral map, five orders, overall level, and a link to my time file.